So this is our uh, third and final lesson for the chapter four uh, conditional formatting. We had done the basically dealing with large data sets. And then last time we looked at Excel tables. And now we're going to take a look at conditional formatting. And I have this in an Excel table right now, but uh, you don't have to have an Excel table in order to do this. Just going to repeat some of the different things to that we had looked at for tables. So remember, how do we know it's this table? Well, we're in our data set. We can see the table ribbon, the, the tab there. So we have a table icon. So I'm going to name my table TBL, and I'll just call it delivery. delivery. Enter and accept it. Uh, we saw how we could, you know, band or unband rows. I'm going to leave them as unbanded right now just so that our conditional formatting is a little bit more uh, visible. We're going to refresh. We're going to do some of our flash fill. So there's our John. I can go Control E to fill in the rest of the first, first names. Then there's May. And then again, control E to fill the rest of the first names. I have a new um, couple of columns here, new number of items and change in number of items. And I've included these because I want to have two different ways of showing the formulas again in a table. So remember, we could do a calculation, co equals, and for the change in number of items, it's just the new items minus the number of items. And I go enter, and because it's an Excel table, it takes it and populates the entire table range. If I click on one of the formulas and take a look at the actual um, setup of the formula I've created, notice that we're using the structure of the table because we have not cell references, but we have field name references. So this is a structured reference. Remember the at symbol means in the current row. And also notice we don't have the table name included in the formula because I'm inside the table. So this is called an unqualified structured reference. We saw a different way of doing these types of formulas as opposed to pointing. We could go equals, use our open square brackets. It comes up since I am in a table with the list of field names. So I'm just going to click price, close the square bracket. So notice the whole table column of price is included. I'm going to multiply that by, I'm going to open my square brackets again. And this time around, I'll pick number of items. And I'll close my square brackets. And now we have the items column in H for the table column being highlighted. And I go enter and the entire table is filled in. Looking again at the actual setup of the formula. Again, we don't have the at symbol this time around. It's a little bit redundant. So we noticed last lesson that when we point to a cell in a table for a calculation, it includes the at symbol for current row. But when I'm using the um, open and closing of the square brackets to get the drop down field list, I don't get that same at symbol. But they both work fine, no problem. And again, this is an unqualified because there's no table name in the actual formula, but it's a structured reference. So unqualified structured reference and structure because it's using instead of cell references like G2 times H2, we're seeing the actual field names. So we'll just get out of that. And now what we'll do is we'll start taking a look at our conditional formatting. So the conditional formatting icon can be found on the home tab over here, sort of just above column I, so to speak. We have a drop down for it. We have a couple of different types of rules we can do, highlighting cells, and we have options there, top bottom rooms, and then off rules, excuse me, and then options there. Data bars with some options we can pick, color scales with options we can pick, and icon sets. And then we get into the new rule, clearing rule, and manage rules. We will be creating a new rule and we'll, we will be managing rules as we go ahead throughout this lesson. So let's take a look. We're going to highlight our cells that we want to format. So I'm picking the Excel table D from D2 to D25. And I'm going to pick conditional formatting. And I'm just going to highlight cell rules. Now, 
can't use the greater than, less than, between, or equal because, well, at least the, the first three, because they're for numerical. But we could do the equal, and I could pick this up, and the dialog box comes up. We can keep classic. We can have format only cells that contain, cell value equal to, and maybe I'll just put in John here. And I'll leave it as the default formula, and I'll go OK. So now my conditional format, the John names in column D have all been highlighted with that formatting. I'm going to go over to column E now. And so I have E2 to E25 highlighted. I'll go conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and I'm going to pick text that contains. So notice it's the same type of window comes up with the classic cells that only contain specific text containing. Now we do have options here, so we have some different values, but I did pick specific text from the icon. So this is the one that's coming up. We could have not containing. So if I want to do something like that, so maybe I, I want not containing, let's maybe use that one. Let's say not containing NOAC. And let's come here and as opposed to picking the default, let's pick a custom format. We get our format cells window come up. And we're going to say that the font, let's make it bold. And the fill, let's make it this sort of palish yellow. And we'll go OK and OK. And there's our formatting. So anything that was not NOAC has been highlighted in bold, and the fill has gone yellow. Let's maybe do a couple of other things here. Let's maybe try to do that same type of thing. Let's highlight rows 2 to 25, so A2 to A25. We'll go conditional formatting and let's do the highlight cell rules again and let's maybe pick between and i'm going to pick between let's say 100 010 and 100 015 and i'll pick one of the other predefined formats green fill with dark green text and i'll go okay and it's now selected. Let's try one more from that area. But before I do that, I have to sort of create something here. So I'm just going to copy that first row and paste it back into the table. And again, remember, we saw this last time when we um, copy and paste, we can we are creating a brand new Excel table row. So let's get out of the selection there. Let's highlight from now A2 to A26. Let's go conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and let's pick duplicate values. And for the duplicate values, um, I'm going to get a custom format again. And I think I'll just go the fill, and maybe we'll put the fill in purple, something really dark. And we'll just go OK and OK. And we can see here that A2 and A26 have been formatted with the color I've chosen because they were duplicates. So conditional formatting, we have the option, actually, let me just hover over this. No, it doesn't give us an explanation, so um, I'll give you a little explanation now. We highlight a range of cells that we want specific formatting to happen to on the condition or with the criteria that something else is occurring. That something else can be within the same column or it can be outside in another column. Okay, so we're slowly building up to that. Let's do one last one and let's take a look at the dates. So here we have from B2 to B26, we have conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and then we have a date occurring. So this doesn't work extremely well in either Mac Excel or PC Excel because we have a limitation here with what types of dates we can look at. So yesterday, today, tomorrow, last week, this week, last month, etc. Well, this is all in 2017. So matter, no matter which one I pick, 
no formatting will happen for it. So it's a limitation. Typically, if we're going to look at dates, um, it's we less so look at the conditional formatting for it. Or maybe we look at, say, um, duplicate dates. OK, we could do that for it. But for a range of dates, we'd have to do something else. It just doesn't work out very nicely for us. So we're just going to cancel out of that. So that's our conditional formatting for highlighting cell rules. And notice these more rule, this more rules option that shows at the bottom brings up that new formatting rule window where we have some options here. Typically, we go for classic. We can pick again some different options, cells that contain a certain value. They're ranked. They're above or below an average. They're unique or duplicate. So we saw the duplicate one already. And we're going to finish off this lesson we're looking at using a formula. We then have different options, you know, cell value or specific text, etc. We have some options for what we want to do as far as greater than, less than. We can actually pick a cell. We can pick a predefined format with a preview here, or we can pick a custom format. Now, the one thing that's a little bit different from Mac Excel to PC Excel is that in the PC Excel, if you watch that video lesson, you'll see that when we choose these different options, we actually see the formatting being applied. With Mac Excel, we only see the formatting being applied when we click OK. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. We're going to now take a look at some of the number ones. I'm going to delete these different formats we have here. And the easy way to do that is to come to your conditional formatting icon and go down to the Manage Rules. Now, this has the current selection, but I can pick this table. So these are all the rules that apply to this particular delivery table. And if I want to delete them, I can just click the minus, and that's deleting all the different rules I have. And I go OK, and now all that conditional formatting is gone. So that's easy enough to delete it. I'm going to come over here in the number of items, column H, and I'll go to conditional formatting, and we're going to do the top bottom rules. So I'm going to pick the top 10 items, but please recognize we're not limited to the top 10. We could change this to the top three if we like. And again, we can pick one of the pre-canned formats or pick a custom format. I'm going to pick the green fill this time. And notice how, again, it because I picked it from the actual conditional formatting icon list, it actually populates this. So if I go OK, now we have the top three items, the top three values showing up. We've got 34 is the highest one, 32 is the next highest one, and then we have one, two, three, four, five occurrences of 30. So that's the top 10. I'm going to undo that. I'm going to keep the same cells highlighted. I'll pick conditional formatting again, top and bottom rules, and now I'll pick the top 10%. And I'm just going to leave it as 10%. And I like the green, so I'm going to go back to green. And I'll go OK. So here we have two of the cells were highlighted. We have a total of, uh, what is it, um, 24 cells. So the top 10% would be 2.4 cells rounded down to two. So these are the top two that were highlighted, 2%, two of the 24 cells, 20, sorry, two of the 25 cells. We have from two to 26, so that's 25 cells. Let's undo that formatting. We'll keep the same thing highlighted. We'll again pick top bottom, but now we'll do the bottom 10. And again, I'm just gonna switch to this to the bottom five and I'll leave it at red this time. We'll go okay. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. OK, and that represents the bottom 10. OK, or sorry, the bottom. Uh, what did I what did I pick again? If you forget, you can always double check. That's the bottom five. OK, and why are there eight of them? Well, because there's some duplicates. There's one, two, three, 15s, four, five, 15s, actually six 15s. And then there's the the 13.
I'll undo that formatting again, and we'll look at the conditional formatting, top bottom, bottom 10%, and I'm going to pick the green again, we'll go OK, and again we get the two lowest ones. We'll undo that conditional formatting, keep the same highlight, we'll go to the top bottom rules, and let's do the above average. So if I click that, and I'll put a custom one on this, so custom, let's make the font bold, and let's make the border, no, we don't want anything with border, let's make the background color this orangey color, and we'll go OK, and OK. So these are the, remember we went to conditional formatting, top bottom rules, these are the above average values. So if we wanted to check that, I'm just going to put myself in my table somewhere, click my table ribbon, pick my total row. Remember from last time, in the, when we add the total row, we can now pick a statistic to um, display. So I'm going to display the average. The average is 2304. And we highlighted or conditionally formatted the above average values. So all of these yellow bolded values are above the 2304. I'm going to come up and highlight the same cells again, go back to my home tab, go to my conditional formatting. I'm going to clear my rules from the selected cells so that I don't have that conditional format anymore. And I'll do the same thing, top bottom rules, but I'll do below average. And I'll just leave that with the default, go OK. And now you can see that the highlighted cells, the conditionally formatted cells, contain the values that are below the 2304 average. So that covers off the highlight cell rules and the top bottom rules. Let's take a look now at data bars. So I'm going to come over here into the number of items. I'm going to highlight from I2 to I26. And remember, if you do have trouble um, selecting your cells, put yourself in the top cell, then hit sh your shift key, hold it down, and then just use your down arrow to select whichever cells you like. And if you go a little further, you can just use the up arrow. And now you have the same cells that I had before, I2 to I26. I'm going to go conditional formatting. I'm going to go data bars. <coughs> and we have two options here, gradient fills or solid fills. And we have blue, green, red, orange, light blue, and purple for gradient. And then we have the same blue, green, red, orange, light blue, and purple for the solid fills. I'm going to pick the blue data bar. And we can see here now that now in my cell, let's deselect it, we can see both the numbers and the actual data bar. And our highest value in the new number of items is 50. So you can see that the gradient data bar takes the entire cell width. So that's the horizontal scale. And then five here is <coughs> one tenth of that. So we can see that the five data bar is quite a bit smaller. If I reselect my cells, go back to conditional formatting icon, and go back to manage rules, I can actually come here, edit that rule like we've seen before. Let's drag this to the side. And I have an option right here, show data bar only. I can pick other things too and you know do some additional formatting to it if I want. But let's pick the show data bar only. And if I go OK, and then OK again, we have the values are gone now, and just the bars are remaining. Now I want to keep the values, so I'm just going to undo that and leave them there. We could do the same thing with a solid bar, but I think it's fairly self-evident what to do. So data bars, we have gradient fills, solid fills, and again, if we go to more rules, we get the detailed menu if we need it. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. I'm going to highlight now J2 to J26, and we're going to take a look at conditional formatting. 
on color scales. And with color scales, we have a number of different options, green, yellow, red, red, yellow, green, green, white, red, red, white, green, blue, white, red, red, white, blue, white to red, red to white, green to white, white to green, green to yellow, and yellow to green. So I'm going to pick this top one, green, yellow, red. So I'm just going to select it and you'll notice that we have shades of green and the darker the green means the higher the value. We have shades of sort of orangey yellow and those are the negative values. And then we have shades of sort of a dark orange and then going into red, which are the most negative values. Now, if we keep our selection and go back into manage rules and pull up that rule, so edit the rule, we do have some options for, you know, switching things around. I could switch it to a two color scale. Okay, so now I only have the red and the green. I'm going to leave it at the three color scale, which has now the lowest percentile and highest. I could change these colors to something I prefer. So something that, you know, maybe I don't like red, yellow, and, and green. I want sort of different, you know, purple, say, for example. I can customize that as much as I like. And we're just going to cancel out of that. We do have, um, and sorry, we'll cancel out of this. We do have some other options too, as far as conditional formats. So again, I'm just gonna make sure I have my J2 to J26 highlighted. And the last one we'll take a look at here from the list are our set of icons. And these are just differences that we could look, did it go up or down? So we can use up and down arrows to the side. We can use different shapes, different flags, different symbols. Let's actually try the little traffic circles, the traffic lights. So I'm going to come here and now we have little traffic lights associated with each of these cells. I'll come into my conditional formatting, go to my format rules, drag it out of the way. I'm going to get rid of my color scale just so that it's a little less visually distracting. And we can again, again see that the red lights are for the negative values, the greens are for the positive values and the yellows are for sort of those intermediate values. And if we wanted to, again, we'll highlight them, conditional format, manage rules, edit that rule, bring it over to the side, we can set these values. Now, typically what happens is that it's easier to just let um, Excel do the setting for you. Uh, you, we could get a little squirrely when we're doing this. We can reverse the icon. We can, just like we saw with the data bars, we can get rid of just the numbers. We can get rid of the numbers and just show the icons if we want by selecting this. We can also change which icon set we want to use. Maybe we prefer this little sort of um, graphical representation. And let's maybe show icon only and go OK. And this is another difference in um, Excel for Mac and Excel for PCs. In the Excel for PCs lesson, you'll see that there's a third button here that says apply. So when I'm changing my rules, I need to click that apply button before I go OK. But in Excel for Mac, we don't, Mac, we don't have it. So we can just go OK. And now you can see that the cells have these little teeny tiny sort of histogram type bars in them. And again, we use these different icons for when we want to have a visual representation of what's going on. Maybe we don't necessarily need the actual numbers. I'm going to do one last thing here. I'm going to come back to conditional formatting, manage rules. I'm going to edit that rule again, and I'm going to bring back the actual value. And I'm going to go, and again, notice how these are automatically set. And I'll just go OK and OK. And now I have both of them. So if I want to do just a quick visual scan for the highest ones, I can you know, look for the um, cells where the bars are all highlighted. And conversely, if I want to look for the low ones, I can look for the bars where the lowest bars are only highlighted. I don't necessarily have to pay attention to the numbers. OK, so that's the highlight cell rules, top bottom rules, data bars, color scales, and icon rules. Okay. 
Uh, let's maybe do one, one last thing with icon sets. Let's actually change this. So let's manage the rules again for this. And we're going to pick it for the table. So I can pick the one I want. So the icon set, I'm going to edit it. And as opposed to the bars, I'm going to use the little plus minus thing. And again, I'm just going to leave it default and leave the numbers there and go OK and OK. And now we have the little plus minus, you know, up down to the side arrows. Uh, if you ever watch the, the newscast, you'll see when they're talking about the stock markets that they show a little plus arrow or show, show a little down arrow for when things are going up or when things are going down. So very similar thing to Excel here. All right. Let's clear all the rules. So let's clear the rules from this table. And let's take a look at our last option where we have rules for using formulas. Now I do have the formatting for the formulas here. You can see how we're going to use a function and, and then we have two conditions, and then we're just going to use a cell reference equal to Boston. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, I want to conditionally format the driver's name. And I'm going to pick conditional format and I'm going to pick new rule. For the new rule, I want to pick my style as classic. And then under my classic, I'm going to pick my use a formula to determine which cells to format. And this is where I'll type in my function and. So there's my equals and, open brackets, and this is where we're going to need the different column references. So I want column F. I only want the driver's name highlighted if they happen to be associated with a TV item. So I'm going to go F2 because that's the first cell of the table that has the data for item. And I'm going to equals open quotes TV close quotes. So when F2 when anything in column F is equal to TV. And then the other thing I'm going to check is that I'm going to pick now um, the number of items. So we're going to pick H. So H2. And we're going to say H2 has to be greater than or equal to. And let's pick 20. And then I'll close my brackets. OK, so there's a function and with two conditions in it. And I'm going to pick custom formatting. And I'm going to go font, bold, fill. I'm going to pick my color. And I'm going to pick this, I like yellow. I'm going to pick yellow. So I'll go OK. So that's the preview of what the formatting of the driver's name will look like. And we'll go OK. So you'll notice here. John May, the driver's name was formatted the way I asked because it had items, TV, and it also had the number of items was greater than 20. We can take a look at another TV. Yes, items greater, 32. Here's another TV, items greater than 20 was 30. Here's another one here that was highlighted for Carl Nowak, but notice this one here for Peter White. OK, so that wasn't highlighted because the number of items didn't fit that second criteria. OK, so both of those had to happen. OK, that's the AND function. So I'm going to undo that and redo it again. So conditional formatting, new rule in our window, bring up the classic style in our window choose the use a formula to determine which cells to format and now type in your function so equals and open brackets i'm just going to bring this down here so i can see it a little better my f2 has to be equal to tv put it in quote double quotes comma and my number of items h2 has to be greater than or equal to 20. And I can close my brackets. I'll go into the custom formatting. I'll pick my font, bold, and my fill. I'm going to pick the yellow again. And I'll go OK and OK. 
Now I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go into conditional formatting and I'm going to go to manage rules and I'm going to edit that rule. And it didn't happen this time. It's very inconsistent, but sometimes what happens is, is that the cell references, this F2 and this H2, for whatever reason, wind up being in, you know, there's a whole bunch of other numbers there rather than just F2, it's like F215679. And instead of H2, it's H2 point or 23695. No idea why that happens. I've done a lot of searching on it, haven't figured out why. Um, in the lesson for conditional formatting for the PC Excel users, you'll see that it actually happened in that video. So you can always go to that one and take a look at it, but just watch out for that. When you have some conditional formatting and you see that maybe the formatting has not been applied, come back in to that manage rules, edit the rule and check that your cell references are okay. I'm just going to cancel this because it worked out fine for us, so I'll cancel again. We're going to do one other last formatting here. We're going to highlight M2 to M26, and we're going to have a conditional format. We're going to have a new rule. We're going to pick again our classic style. We're going to again pick our use a formula. And the formula this time will say, well, I want the amount highlighted if L2, so column L is the destination, is equal to open quotes, and I'll just pick Boston. And again, I'll put some different formatting on that. So I'll go custom format, uh, maybe the font this time I'll go bold and italic, and maybe the fill I'll go pale orange and just for something else maybe for the border i'm going to put a let's see let's put an outline on it and let's put let's make it purple and let's pick maybe a design for a line and we'll put maybe some different kind of line and we'll go okay so this is what it's going to look like. You don't really see the purple line too well, but at least we'll be able to see it up over here. And we go OK. And if I blow things up, there's our bold italic. And it doesn't really have yeah, the purple is so dark. I guess it doesn't really show too well. But again, these are the two options that we did using the AND function and using just that our particular cell had to equal Boston. So you can see that the amounts beside Boston as the destination were all highlighted with the desired format. So that's really as far as we go with conditional formatting. Um, you can see that it's not particularly crazy hard to do, but just watch for those, you know, conditional formatting, manage rules, you know, to see the rules for everything, you can go this entire worksheet or the table, it will list all of them for you. And then you can edit. And let's try this one again, see if the editing and it messes up again, and it didn't mess up. So we're on a, a good track this time. So we'll just cancel that out. But that's a nice way to see all your rules and you can edit them or delete them or add new rules as you see fit. So we'll just go cancel. And now you're ready to complete your chapter four simulation training, the simulation exam, and the two assignments.